Indian Hotels Company Limited IHCL is the pioneer of hospitality business in India. It is South Asia's largest hospitality focused enterprise with Indian origins. It manages a portfolio of hotels, resorts, jungle safaris, palaces, spas and in-flight catering services and is a part of Tata Group with its major shareholders being the Tata Trusts. Boasting an impressive portfolio, the Taj Mumbai being the most iconic and well-known of the lot, what is the story of this company? Here at India Business Insights, we will unravel the story of one of the most prominent hotel chains in India, which has literally seen and participated in history happening in the last century. Before that, we urge you to like and share this video. Please do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. History IHCL's history date backs to 1899 when IHCL was founded by Jamsetji Tata. The company was incorporated on 1st April 1902, headquartered in Mumbai, Maharashtra. Diamond by the Sea, the Taj Mahal Palace, which is considered an architectural jewel in Mumbai, was IHCL's first hotel and India's first five-star hotel. The foundation of the Taj was laid in 1898 and the hotel opened its gates to the guests for the first time on December 16, 1902, even before the foundation for the Gateway of India was laid. It is located in Kolaba besides the Gateway of India and used to be the first site for ships calling at Bombay port before the construction of the Gateway. It is also believed that Taj Mahal Palace was the first building in Bombay to be lit by electricity. At one time, it was believed that Jamshedji Tata was inspired to build this hotel after he was refused entry at Watson's Hotel, which was restricted to whites only. However, this story has often been challenged by various commentators who claim that Jamshedji had built this grand hotel to give the people a royal experience worthy of Bombay. According to another story, he opened the hotel when one of his friends expressed disgust over the hotels that were present in Bombay then. But a more plausible reason was advanced by Lowood Fraser, a close friend of Tata and one of the early directors of the IHCL group, that the idea had been in his mind and that he had made a study on the subject. He did not have any desire to own a hotel, but he wanted to attract people to India and to improve Bombay. It is said that Jamsetji Tata had travelled to places like London, Paris, Berlin to arrange for materials and pieces of art, furniture and the interior decors of his hotel. The Indian architects originally on the project for the Taj were Sitaram Khandirao Vaidya and D.N. Mirza. However, it was completed by an English engineer, W.A. Chambers. Khan Sahib Saurabhji Ratanji contractor was the builder of this grand hotel and the unique floating staircase of the Taj was his design. Construction of the Taj cost over rupees 4 crores. The original hotel is a six-story building with a central Moorish dome and a magnificent architecture of the Indo-Saracenic style. This royal palatial building is carved with Victorian, Gothic and Romanesque details along with Edwardian touches on the roof. It's a landmark in more ways than one. For more than 50 years after it was built, the hotel's 240-foot high dome was the clear mark marker of Bombay Harbour that could be seen from the sea. The gateway of India wasn't built until 20 years later. The dome is still an official triangulation point along with a chimney and a rocky island for ships of the Indian Navy to fix their position in the harbour. When it opened, the hotel boasted a series of firsts, American fans, German elevators, Turkish baths and English butlers. The building was also first in Bombay to be lit by electricity. Eventually, it also ended up having the city's first licensed bar, India's first all-day dining restaurant and the country's first international discotheque. On November 26, 2008, the hotel was hit by an unfortunate series of terror attacks that took the lives of at least 167 people, 
with at least 31 people dying in the hotel. The hotel was reopened after restoration on Indian Independence Day, August 15, 2010. On November 6, 2010, US President Barack Obama became the first foreign head of state to stay at the hotel, post attacks, and also delivered a speech from the terrace of the hotel where he said that the Taj has been the symbol of strength and the resilience of the Indian people. However, it had some not so grand moments as well. In 1966, the building was so run down that the president of Hilton Hotels said that old Taj will remain standing only as long as the termites keep holding hands. Apart from Taj Bombay, IHCL has many other majestic hotels under its name. In 1970, it became the first company to run palaces as hotels with Taj Lake Palace and Rambagh Palace, Jaipur. IHCL had been converting royal palaces in India into luxury hotels since the 1970s. Many of these palace hotels have an eventful history of their own. The first palace to be converted into a Taj luxury hotel was the Lake Palace in Udaipur, 1971. Other examples include the Rambagh Palace in Jaipur, Umed Bhavan Palace in Jodhpur, Falaknuma Palace in Hyderabad, and Nadesar Palace in Varanasi. In 1970s, the Taj Group also began its business in metropolitan hotels, opening the five-star deluxe hotel Taj Koromandal in Chennai in 1974. In the same year, the group also opened India's first international five-star deluxe beach resort, the Taj Fort, Agora Beach Resort, in Goa. In 1977, it opened the Taj President, now Vivanta by Taj President, a business hotel in Mumbai by acquiring its equity interest and operating contract and after having spent 75 years in Mumbai with the Taj Palace, built in 1903. The hospitality group made its foray in the national capital with Taj Hotel, Taj Mahal Hotel in Delhi Taj Mansingh, its other crown jewel in 1978. Initially named Taj Mahal Palace, Taj Mansingh was the second property under the brand name and what better place to establish it safe in the middle of Delhi. The hotel for a long time mainly catered to diplomats and government officials. The iconic hotel sits 5 to 10 minutes away from many key heritage sites of Delhi like Safdar Jung Tomb, Humayu's Tomb, Purana Kila, President's Estate, etc. The Taj Mansingh was given to the Tata Group in 1978 on a 33 year lease by NDMC, which ended in 2011, and since the company was given nine temporary extensions till 2017. The auction for Taj Mansingh was pending since the lease expired in 2011. However, the civic body could not auction the property then as it was tied up in a legal battle with the IHCL. However, auctioning this iconic property proved to be a challenge for the civic body. The auction had to be put off twice as it got less than the required number of bids for the five-star property to go under the hammer. Failing to auction the luxury hotel in two attempts, NDMC had to relax the eligibility criteria for bidders and reduce the minimum number of bids required. In the final auction, IHCL fiercely fought against the rival group, ITC, in the bidding for the hotel and retained the iconic Taj Mansingh Hotel at a license fee of Rs. 7.03 crore per month, including GST or 32.5% of the gross to- turnover of the property. In 1980, the Taj Group opened its first hotel outside India, the Taj Sheba Hotel in Yemen, and in the late 1980s acquired interest in the St. James Court Hotel, which now comprises Taj 51 Buckingham Gate Suites and the Residences, and St. James Court, a Taj Hotel in London. In 1983, the company signed an agreement with Spencer International Hotels Limited a wholly owned subsidiary of Spencer & Company Limited, to get license to operate Konumra Hotel at Chennai. 
वेस्ट एंड होटल एट बैंगलोर एंड सवॉय होटल एट ऊटा कामुंड द फाइव स्टार डी लक्स होटल ताज बंगॉल इन कोलकाता वॉज ओपन इन द इयर नाइनटीन एटी नाइन एंड विद दिस द ताज ग्रुप बिकेम द ओनली होटल चेन इन इंडिया विद द प्रेजेंस इन द सिक्स मेजर मेट्रोपोलिटन सिटीज ऑफ इंडिया नेमली मुंबई डेली कोलकाता बैंगलोर हैदराबाद एंड चेन्नई कॉन्करेंटली विद द एक्सपेंशन ऑफ इट्स लग्जरी होटल चेन इन द मेजर मेट्रोपोलिटन सिटीज द ताज ग्रुप also expanded its business hotels division in the major metropolitan and large secondary cities in india during the 1990s the taj group continued to expand its geographic and market coverage in india it developed specialized operations such as wildlife lodges and consolidated its position in established markets through upgrading of existing properties as well as development of new properties taj also set up taj kerala hotels and resorts limited in 1994 along with kerala tourism development corporation in one of the major developments in the history of indian hospitality industries indian hotels company limited or ihcl entered into a strategic business alliance with the hyderabad based gvk group to consolidate their respective hotel businesses in hyderabad into a new corporate entity under the name Taj GVK Hotels and Resorts Limited in 1999 in 2019 IHCL entered a new segment foring into plantation trails and homestays with the launch of AMA Trails and Stays India's first branded homestay portfolio and also expanded its footprint in the national capital region with the signing of Vivanta Hotel in Greater Noida with the covid pandemic wreaking havoc around the globe in 2020 ihcl decided to launch mobile application for its home delivery platform qmin to face the onslaught of the challenges posed by the nationwide lockdown brands the company started its journey with taj and it still holds one of the most crucial and special places in the company's portfolio though at one point ihcl tried to rebrand all of its properties as taj it did not go through with the proposition and chose to maintain different brands with different positioning now let's dive into the various brands under ihcl the first is taj taj is considered the most iconic hospitality brand from ihcl it continues to be one of the most revered and loved hospitality brands of the country with a legacy of over 116 years With over 90 hotels operating under the brand, it offers a plethora of experiences from hotels, resorts, palaces and safaris to its customers. This brand comes under the purview premium luxury hotels and caters to global achievers and sophisticated and well-traveled individuals. Hotels like Taj Palace New Delhi, the Taj Mahal Hotel, the Taj Mahal Palace Mumbai, Rambagh Palace Jaipur Umed Bhavan Palace Hotel Jodhpur etc are some examples of Taj hotels which are epitome of luxury and meant for most distinguished travelers looking for luxury which is already part of their life next we come to Vivanta which represents a collection of sophisticated upscale hotels and resorts that cater to both business and leisure travelers and its target market segment consists of young contemporary achievers from diverse backgrounds the brand name vivanta was inspired by the term born viva the typical consumer profile for vivanta is one who is sophisticated and has appreciation for good things in life vivanta was launched as a result of brand restructuring exercise the new brand replaced the taj residency brand and started representing IHCL's presence in the upper upscale segment of Indian hospitality market Vivanta was initially launched in 2008 when IHCL rebranded three Taj residency hotel properties to Vivanta IHCL tested and tweaked the brand for 2 years before the national rollout in 2010 now around 36 properties are operating under this brand Vivanta is 10 to 15% cheaper than Taj hotels targeting 
the upper upscale segment of the market. The brand has presence in major cities and tourist destinations to attract the affluent customers. The rebranding of Taj Residency to Vivanta was a part of the Tata Group to move from a branded house to House of Brands brand portfolio structure. The move was very relevant for IHCL because this restructuring would prevent dilution of Taj brand which is perceived to be a premium luxury brand. The use of Taj brand for all hotel properties of IHCL made sense in all these years because the market was not highly segmented. Since Taj was used to endorse all properties of IHCL, there was always a chance of different types of properties carrying the Taj brand. So, in a city, there would be two type pro- types of properties, one luxurious and another upscale carrying the same brand name. This can create problems in terms of brand positioning. In order to position Taj as a luxurious brand, it needed to have a consistency in terms of hotel properties and service. This consistency, however, would not be possible when there are inconsistencies in terms of size of hotel properties and the level of service in those hotels. Another issue with branded house was that the firm was constrained by the positioning of the core brand. Hence, IHCL was not able to tap into opportunities other than luxury hotels when they followed branded house strategy. The launch of Ginger in the budget segment was an effort by the company to move into tapping other opportunities presented by the market. Ginger Ginger Hotels is IHCL's revolutionary concept in hospitality. It defines the lean lux segment in India. These hotels are designed and modeled to provide refreshing, reviving and seamless experience to its guests and has 85 hotels under its name. The target market segment of the brand is millennials who switch between work and play effortlessly and seek seamless and flexible stay experiences. The move Towards a basket of brands started with the launch of Ginger brand of hotels for the domestic budget business traveller. It is the lowest priced hotels targeting the frequently travelling businessman. The brand has successfully tabbed the need for a chain of quality hotels which targets the travellers with limited budget. Believing that the strongest growth in customer demand is expected from the lower end of the spectrum, and having a strong brand presence catering to this segment is critical to IHCL's growth. The Ginger brand was reimagined in response to the change in customer preferences. Focused on a lifestyle approach, the new Ginger involves refreshed products, focus on millennials, self-run restaurants and digital-led services. The country has tremendous potential for growth in the next decade and no other industry is better place to support and drive this growth than travel and tourism. Backed by the successful repositioning and an integrated operational structure under IHCL, the brand is now well poised to scale greater heights. Selections was launched with 12 hotels across the country. The vision for the brand is to celebrate individuality by offering unique experiences through landmark hotels that have their own legacy and charm, spanning a curated collection of signature city hotels and extraordinary leisure resorts, Selections provides distinct experiences for travellers seeking unforgettable stories. It allows IHCL to cater to a broader audience of travellers who prefer staying in hotels with a distinctive character as it includes hotels that have a slice of history defining location or differentiated theme. The positioning of the brand is anything between upscale and upper upscale, which is market driven. What is upscale in Delhi or Mumbai could qualify as upper upscale in Ranchi or Patna or Shillong. There are certain common elements between these hotels, but otherwise they are about their own character, which IHCL does not want to change. The very purpose of having a named collection like this is that the hotels can maintain their identity. So although they are part of the global subcontinent story, they are completely local in terms of customer needs and experience. Currently, there are 26 hotels 
operating under this brand the company launched this brand believing that having this separation will make the taj brand purer and allow vivanta to evolve and at the same time create a platform for ihcl to add a significant number of hotels to its portfolio in many secondary cities and district capitals of india they may already be there but without the business model, model to become a taj or a vivanta this way they keep the name they created but they get all the benefits that are difficult for them to achieve as single hotel owners to match both customer expectations and market competitors as it stands today all selection hotels are all management contracts while vivanta will be led by new construction selections will primarily be a conversion brand globally big chains such as hyatt and marriott also have such curated collections of hotels which are not called hyatt or marriott but known by their own individual names and that is what ihcl wants to do with this brand as well next we come to the business model the company undertakes its business through direct ownership of hotels lease arrangements licensing arrangements and operating or management contracts and franchises these diverse modes of business operation complement each other and enable it to efficiently capitalize on its brand for achieving sustained growth direct ownership of hotel properties the hotels which are operated by ihcl under the ownership model are located on land owned by the company the land is either owned directly by the company or by company subsidiaries or jointly controlled entities for such hotels the title to the buildings equipment and furniture or fixture vests in the company next lease arrangements some of the company's hotels are located on land which has been leased to ihcl by government authorities or private parties the term of such leases typically varies from 30 years to 99 years which is typically renewable upon expiry for another term subject to mutual agreement on the terms and conditions between the company and the lesser the company owns the building and furniture or fixtures and is required to pay a specified lease rental for the duration of the lease deed next licensing arrangements the company has also entered into licensing arrangements to occupy and use buildings on a long term basis for operating its hotels such agreements have been entered into with various parties including governmental or quasi governmental authorities and are subject to payment of annual license fee which may be subject to escalation after periodic intervals typically the company provides services in relation to planning designing construction and equipment of the hotel under these arrangements an ownership of such hotel vests in the licensors at all times operating and management contracts some of the hotels and bungalows are operated and managed by the company through operating and management contracts in such cases apart from operating and managing the hotels and bungalows the company also provides advice regarding project and design related services at the construction stage through a separate technical services agreement operating and management contracts provide the company with absolute and sole discretion in the supervision of the operation of the hotel under these arrangements the company is entitled to a basic management fee which is a fixed percentage of the gross income of the hotel and an incentive fee linked to the gross operating prof- profit of the hotel the company may also receive marketing fee and project management fee under some of the operating and management contracts franchising agreements the company also enters into franchising agreements with individual hotels owning companies by offering special expertise relevant for planning realization organization operation franchising and marketing of certain hotels by such individual companies the individual hotels are thereafter included in the bouquet of hotels which the company operates under one of its brands however the use of company's brand has been provided on a non exclusive and non transferable basis for operation of hotels by the individual companies 
Now we come to operations. IHCL sources of revenue are many and distinct. Apart from offering rooms to its customers, it also provides various other services which add to its total revenue. The main revenue sources for the company are room rentals and F&B services. The company also of late has been growing its income from management fees. The company has significant other operating incomes from health and wellness spas and related services from ancillary services from its banqueting, meeting and conventions hosted at its hotels. As per IHCL's report for quarter 2 FFI 2022-23, almost 50% of IHCL's revenue is from rooms, 35% from food and beverages business and 6% from management fees. IHCL is expecting its supply to remain constrained. The total number of rooms under construction as a percentage of existing rooms has gone down from 99% in 2012 to 39% in 2022. Additionally, it expects 5% demand growth in rooms ahead of 3% growth in supply in the current year. The following is IHCL's portfolio as per Q2 of FI 2023. By 2025, the company plans to achieve a 50-50 portfolio Currently, its share of managed property in its portfolio stands at 46% as against 39% in 2019-20, whereas its management fees have shown tremendous growth of 70% going from INR 45 crores in 2019-20 to, to INR 76 crores in 2022. Out of all of its customer segments, the business segment has the highest occupancy, whereas Palaces have the highest ARR and REV PAR. In Q2 of FI 2023, its occupancy has shown an overall domestic growth of 9% as compared to the FI 2020 figures. Similarly, ARR and REV PAR are at 31% and 34% higher than the FI 2020 figures. Now, we come to the financials. The hospitality segment has its own set of peculiarities which sets it apart from the others. The segment is highly seasonal in nature and requires huge investments in fixed assets. Additionally, most hotel chains are financed through debt across industry and hence interest and depreciation account for the biggest heads of account and directly impact profitability. In the face of such challenges, many companies switched to a new asset light model under which they would manage hotels rather than own them. As we look at the financials of the company, we find that given its superior positioning, it is not doing that well. Where the industry enjoys an operating profit margin of 40-50%, to 50%, the company is hardly able to maintain it at 20%. No significant growth is seen in the revenue of the company even after rebranding and adding more properties to the portfolio. Part of the reason for this is the competition faced by the company by international as well as domestic competitors apart from focusing on the upscale segment of the society for such a long period of time. IHCL has experienced the best ever financial performance in quarter 2 of the financial year 2022-23 to exceeding its pre-COVID performance. Additionally, it has finally earned a positive profit before tax after 12 years in the second quarter of the financial year. Further, it expects the demand supply position of the rooms to remain favourable with very little new inventory coming up. As per its financials, IHCL is well on its way to achieve 25% EBITDA growth in 2022 and realise its goal as per R1 2025 of reaching 33% EBITDA growth by 2025. Ginger has showcased its ability to become the growth engine of IHCL through its performance in H1 of 2022-23 to with 42% growth in its revenue. Impact of COVID Hotels are a deep cyclical business which is usually first hit during an economic downturn and is the last to recover in an up cycle. With the travel and government restrictions in place, the industry faced many challenges. The demand for hotel rooms, banqueting and restaurants dipped. In fact, many of these facilities were closed for operations for extended periods. IHCL 
like several other chains, had two years of large losses. However, it has recovered extremely well in the current year. Future direction, with travelers increasingly gravitating towards brand, brands that not only epitomize the essence of world-class luxury, but also follow responsible business practices, the company recently announced its long-term three-pronged strategy to drive responsible profitable growth, R1 2025. Under the plan, IHCL plans to re-engineer its margin, reimagine its brand while restructuring its portfolio. IHCL aims to build a portfolio of 300 hotels by 2025 to 2026. The company's current portfolio of brands is helping it address diverse customer segments at multiple price points and it means to continue to cater to the evolving market landscape. To increase the earnings, it will scale the Ginger brand portfolio to 125 hotels. AMA Stays and Trails will be a portfolio of 500 and Cumin, its culinary and home delivery platform, will expand to 25 plus cities. Taj, the luxury brand, is slated to grow 200 hotels across the globe and Vivanta and Selections will scale to a portfolio of 75 hotels. Additionally, under the tagline, Doing Business the Responsible Way, Pathya, IHCL plans to achieve the following goals by 2030 and has undertaken the following projects to achieve them. Conclusion IHCL continues to enjoy customer loyalty when it comes to its luxury brands and is also venturing into pro- providing hospitality service to other segments of the society to increase its portfolio and market share and this strategy might help improve its profitability as it continues to own and manage some of the most iconic hotels of the country. With this, we come to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and share the video. And